Hi, welcome to another craft video from the Kansas City, Kansas Public Library. I'm Cheryl and I'm in charge of the craft kits at the main library. And today's video is to accompany a craft kit that we'll be giving out starting July 15th, 2023. But if you don't have the craft kit, uh, you don't have time to get to the library or you're watching this later, you can do this same project with any uh, terracotta pot that you buy at the garden center or the craft store. And then um, I'll tell you what's in the kit so you can buy the rest of the things at the craft store. So what we're making today is this adorable little flower pot. Okay. Um, this is shaped like a, obviously, a teapot. But it's a planter. The inside is glazed so that you don't have to worry about putting uh, um, dirt and water in there. And it's just painted with these little flowers. Now you can paint whatever designs you want. I've chosen to do flowers and dots. You can do stripes and zigzags or like a, a stripe with a dot and a stripe and some dots. Whatever design you want to paint. You'll get enough paint to do a lot of different designs on this. Okay, so now let me tell you what's in the kit or what you'll need to buy if you're wanting to do a similar project later. Okay, so what you'll have in your kit um, is this cute little teapot, uh, flower pot. Now the inside is glazed and the outside is uh, rough. Now you can do this project with a regular flower pot as well. Uh, before you put something in a regular flower pot, like a terracotta pot, uh, before you paint it, you will need to um, seal the inside with like a terracotta sealer. If you don't do that and you put uh, some sort of pot, a flower or something in the flower pot and you put water in it, the water will soak through the ceramic or terracotta um, and lift up the paint on the outside. So if you're doing this with your own supplies and you're using a terracotta pot, you can buy a, a spray terracotta sealer at the craft store and just make sure you do the inside. Uh, what else you'll have in your kit is a paintbrush. You will have three colors of acrylic paint and you will have a Sharpie marker. Now this is going to be adding the details at the end after all the paint is dried. You might want a pencil if you're the kind of person who likes to plan out their designs ahead of time. I'm not particularly one like that, so, uh, but I can show you how to do it if you want. You can, uh, you know, you can sketch out lightly the designs. Don't get too heavy. Um, but if you do a, a small mark, you can clean it off or erase it gently. So a, a light pencil will work for that kind of thing. I'm just going to jump in and start on my design. And these are just uh, regular acrylic paints. And the colors you have in the kit are going to just be a random assortment of pretty colors. So I'm going to paint flowers on mine. You are welcome to paint stripes or polka dots or anything like that. But I want to show you how to do flowers, a couple of different kinds of flowers. With my red, I'm going to do a rose. Now, for my roses, I don't actually have to be perfect. These are kind of stylized roses. So I'm going to be doing just kind of a, a rounded blob like this. And you, with kind of bumpy edges. Like that. Don't put it on too thick. The thicker it is, the longer it's going to take to dry. And I'm just going to do a few of those all over my teapot. Let's do one up here. And you might want 
to do different sizes, some bigger, some smaller, to add a little bit of interest. And you're welcome to do one style of flower all over your flower pot if that's what you prefer. All right. So I'm going to do and I'm going to rinse out my brush with some water and I'm going to do a different style of flower uh, on my flower pot. Okay, so I think I'm going to switch to the orange. And for this style, I'm going to do an actual kind that has petals. So I'm going to get a little bit of my paint and I'm just going to do kind of um, teardrop shapes. All come into the center. And you can do five or six or seven petals. It doesn't really matter. do big fat round petals like that or you can do small little ones or a mixture of the two now these don't have to be perfect because flowers are in nature and nature is not perfect. So some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. Now I think with the blue, I think I'm not gonna add any more flowers. I think I'm just gonna add some like detail, like some polka dots or something just random polka dots you can make these big polka dots small polka dots whatever you like and try to do them on different uh, kind of levels because if or you I mean you can do like a row of dots around and make them all in straight lines or you could do what I'm doing and just kind of randomly do them some bigger some smaller some up some down but not all in one kind of horizontal line I like mine a little bit more random than that and a couple I think I'm gonna put closer together and maybe some farther apart. Then I'm gonna do some some work on the, the handle. I think this handle this handle has a nice little spiral. So I think I'm just gonna take the blue and I'm just going to start under here and I'm just gonna follow that spiral around. And these don't have to be perfect, remember. One of the joys of having a hand-painted project is that it looks kind of rustic looking. If you wanted something absolutely 100% perfect, you could go buy a factory made, machine made product. Okay. I think I'm going to let that dry. I think I'm done with that. Actually, you know what? I think to tie in this and the teapot thing, I think I'm just going to paint this part kind of blue too. Alright, 
So I am going to set this aside to dry. Rinse out my paintbrush. You can see I painted all of this. And my paint pots are still almost completely full. You will have enough to do a thin layer, which is all you need, a thin layer, it, for to practically cover this whole thing almost. You can't, you don't have enough of any one color to cover the whole thing in one color, but you certainly have enough in here to cover it in completely in stripes or something like that, maybe zigzags. If that's your kind of thing, go for it. Now I'm going to set these aside to dry until um, all of the paint is completely dry to the touch. Okay, so this is all dry to the touch and it's ready to be uh, detailed. I'm going to take my Sharpie marker and I think I'm going to start with the roses. Now how I'm going to do the roses is, here, I'll show you. I'm going to do a little spiral in the center just like this. Then I'm going to start out, I'm going to go back a little bit. And I'm going to go out and start out here, and I'm just going to do a kind of a curve, a circular curve. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to back a little bit, start out, and go down. Go back a little bit, go out, and go down. So I'll just do that around, around my uh, red lumpy bumpy circles, and it'll make a rose. So let's see what it looks like here. So I'm going to start with a, a, a spiral in the center. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to start back a little bit and out and go down and in, curve. I'm going to do the same thing, curve, curve here. I'm going to go here. Now, when I get close to the outside edge, see where those little lumps are? I can just follow the curve of the lump. And I don't have to be exact. Remember, this is artistic. This is not perfect. So I can do exactly the same thing here. And just kind of make my things. The reason we do the, uh, we start back a little bit is to make it look like the, uh, the petals are overlapping like a rose petal stew. Remember they overlap in the little spiral. So I'm going to do that for all my red ones. Now for the orange ones where I actually have petals, I'm, I could just completely make petals with little teardrops and outline them, but since I'm being a little more stylized with the roses, I think I'm going to be a little more stylized with these flowers too. So I'm going to start in not quite to the center, but a little bit out from the center, and I'm going to go around about three quarters of the way. And I'm going to do that same thing for each of the petals. And remember, you don't have to be perfect. Okay, and now I'm just going to put some little dots in the center to be the center of my flower. And I'm doing that for the same for the big fat petals too. So what that does is that gives the impression of the petals overlapping. Okay, so I'm going to do that for all of my flowers. Okay, so I've got the flowers all done. Now I need to decide if I want to add some black accents to my blue parts. I could of course leave it like this. Whatever is accented with the black is going to kind of stand out a little bit more.
So right now it kind of looks like the blue is in the background and the flowers are, are popping, but I can certainly do a little bit of blue accent or a little bit of accent around the blue too. Now I could just circle the whole dot, but since I didn't completely fill in and be perfect with these and more stylized, in order to look make this look uh, like it belongs on the same style. I'm not going to completely perfectly circle all my dots. I'm going to do the same thing I did with kind of these petals. I'm just going to kind of give a round kind of impression like that. And I'm just going to do that for all of them. Okay, so I've got the dots circled now. I actually connected that one accidentally, but that's fine. It's not perfect. I think I'm going to do this, uh, I'm going to do a little line around the edge here, I think. And I think I'm going to outline the edges of the blue as well. Okay, so I think I'm about done. Now, it's not possible if you make an accident with the Sharpie marker, you can't undo it. But let's say you made uh, your, your, hand, your hand slipped and you made a little dot right there. What you can do is just make it look deliberate. Make a few little dots here and there of a similar thing if it maybe if it's a little line make a few little lines here and there just kind of to make it look like your accident accidental slip was deliberate just do it a few more times around and it's no longer an accident it's a style all right so that is the end of my painting now, this is very um, matte and, and rough. If I want a glossy finish, I am certainly, I can certainly get a spray gloss sealant and spray the outside down or brush it down with a, a, some sort of liquid um, varnish or, or water-based sealant. I can certainly do that to kind of protect my design. What you do then is up to a matter is up to you. Um, now the inside is glazed. Now one thing I do want to tell you is that with most flower pots there is a drainage hole at the bottom so that excess water can drain out into the um, saucer and not drown your roots. Uh, however the drainage hole on this one is a little different um, this saucer is actually connected, so there's not a drainage hole into the saucer. The drainage hole on this one is actually into the spout. So what you'll have to do when you water this is you're going to try and avoid overwatering. But what you're also going to do is uh, when, after you water and you let it set for a little bit for the dirt to absorb the water, then you're going to like hold your plant in gently and just gently tip it so that the excess water runs down the spout just like you're pouring tea and that will get the excess water out uh, as a drain hole um, so that you don't drown your roots but wouldn't this look adorable um, with not only a flower but with some herbs sitting in it in your kitchen in a sunny area I think it would be adorable. It's so stinking cute. Okay, so thanks for watching another craft video from the Kansas City, Kansas Public Library. I'm Cheryl. I'll see you next time. Bye.